Hi, everybody. Good Hello. morning. Hi, Carl. <laughs> Hi, Maria. Hi, how are you guys? I'm good, yeah, thank you. you. Good. It's Friday, so it must be Friday Facebook Live with Tanya and the legal experts. I want to welcome Carl Schusterman and Maria Schneider here today. And we're very excited to be streaming live into the Canadian Forum today. And we look forward to a lot of interesting questions and a lot of expert answers. <laughs> so, uh, just as an introduction, um, as I said, my name is Tanya Friedman. I'm the Chief Operating Officer of Kinetics USA. We are a recruitment company. We specialize in the direct hire of international nurses into the US. We work with hospitals and nursing homes, surgery centers all over the US. And I have with me Carl and Maria. I'm going to read off um, a brief introduction of Carl um, and Maria. Um, and then we'll get started with the questions. So, um, attorney Carl Schusterman has over 40 years of experience practicing immigration law. He's one of the very limited number of attorneys who've been designated as cert certified specialist in immigration and naturalization law by the California State Bar. More than 10 years, he's been voted as one of the best lawyers in America and as a super lawyer by his colleagues in the bar. He was featured in the 2018 February issue of Super Lawyers magazine. He's been named as one of the top 15 corporate immigration attorneys in the US. And he has his hard work and dedication has earned him the highest rating and in legal and ethics from the prestigious Martindale Hubble Legal Direct Directory. Oh my goodness, can't speak this Friday. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then we have also, welcome Carl. Uh, we have also Maria Schneider is a partner attorney with Marcella Unkenholt. Maria's practice includes both business and family based immigration. She's a member of the American Immigration Lawyers Association and the Cincinnati Bar Association. She founded and is now the vice chair of the CBA Immigration Law Practice Group and serves on the CBA Board of Trustees. She's an adjunct professor at the University of Cincinnati, Cincinnati College of Law, where she teaches immigration law. So welcome, everybody. I see that we have a lot of people joining us today. Milanus is watching, David Salcedo. Thank you so much, David. David's one of the admins of the group. Thank you for giving us this opportunity. We have Sol, Ryan, Teresa. Hi, everybody. Um, Guado. Um, so we have a lot of people joining us today. Um, please, when you are joining, uh, put your name in. Tell us where you are, um, where you are watching from. And please keep posting your questions because we have the legal experts here to answer. So the first question we have from uh, Guado, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, is, is having a Canadian RN license an edge in applying for the U.S.? Carl, do you want to take that question? Um, well, I think it's probably, uh, it probably makes it easier to, to get a good job in the U.S. But <laughs> as long as you have a, a RN license in the Philippines or, or in Canada, that you're permitted to come to the U.S. on a PM visa as long as you meet the other qualifications. So we get this question a lot from uh, Philippine nurses who are who are LPNs or practicing something else in Canada saying, do I need an RN license in Canada? And it, if that were the question, the answer would be no. Okay. Maria, do you have anything to add to that? No, I agree 100%. <laughs> okay. On the same page. And yes. that's why I'm so grateful to you for, for doing this forum because, you know, the reason why we started it is coming to the U.S., as you know, can be such a hard stressful, frustrating process. And often we, I've seen in, the, in these forums that many people ask a lot of questions and they don't, you know, we, we, they're asking each other. Nurses are asking each other the questions. Yeah. Um, and um, so, so we're really grateful for your expertise. We have a, a question from Hansel. I know Hansel, welcome Hansel. Mm -hmm. um, is the TN visa better than an immigrant visa? My wife has an application for a US immigrant visa both of us are Canadian RNs with NCLEX, but no IELTS. Maria, if you want to take that question. 
Um, so I guess better de is determined by what exactly it is that you and your wife would be looking for. Um, the TN is a temporary visa, so it wouldn't allow you to remain in the U.S. permanently. Um, it has some um, immigrant intent issues, if you want to think of it that way, that you have to be planning to return back to Canada at the end of your time in the U.S., um, it is renewable, so you can stay for an extended time, but the long-term plan would be that you're planning to return to Canada versus an immigrant visa indicates that you're planning to relocate to the U.S. in a more permanent way, that you'd be applying for a green card to live and work in the U.S. indefinitely. Um, and aside from that, the TN is tied to your employer, so it would only allow you to work for the employer that sponsors the TN, whereas once you obtain your green card, you have a little bit more freedom that you can move from one employer to the other, um, depending upon, of course, the terms of an employment agreement, maybe that you signed with that sponsor employer for the green card. Okay. So, Hansel, the answer to your question is the pros and cons for each, right, Maria? Maria? Oh. She seems to have frozen. Um, okay, um, hopefully we'll get Maria back online. And um, Carl, we have a question from Yi Han. And um, Yi Han is asking if a Canadian nurse works in the US with a TN visa, can he or she apply for an EB3 immigration visa later? If the nurse comes from India or China and the nurse needs to apply for the renewal of the TN visa, can the nurse renew the TN visa um, if she has an approved I-140 petition. So there are a lot of questions in there from Yihan. Okay, well, the, yeah, these are types of questions that we get all the time. Uh, basically, the answer is yes. Uh, uh, although you don't want to come on a TN and then right away have your employer uh, sponsor you for a green card because it, it's supposed to be your intent, at least on the particular, you know, the last trip that you uh, took across the border to the U.S. to return to uh, Canada, not to stay in the U.S. Um, so usually our, our TNs come to the U.S. if later they decide that they want to become permanent residents and the employer wants to sponsor them. We usually wait at least 90 days after they're in the U.S. and then they can go back to Canada or go overseas and come back on their TN as long as they can assure the immigration agent at the airport or the border that they're not going to get a green card on this particular trip. So a lot of our TN nurses, we just arrange for them to get their green cards in Canada. So it's not on any of their TN trips to the US and then it's fine. And this questionnaire, uh, the, this person asking the question is a particularly good question because she singled out uh, China and India. Mm -hmm. Those are the two really backlog countries. I mean, if you're from India, it could take you decades right now to get a green card. Not as bad for China, but still long waiting times. So yes, come on a TN, apply. If, if you decide you like it here in the US, then have your employer apply for a green card down the road and you can keep coming in and out on the TN uh, and you may want to consider getting your green card in Canada and not adjusting your status in the U.S. So say that again, you might want to do what? Sorry, at the end, you said? You, you, uh, well, you may want to, you could adjust status in the U.S., but sometimes just for purposes of uh, not confusing the immigration, I used to be an immigration officer, so uh, they're, they're, not, they're not lawyers and sometimes they get confused about these things. It may be better for you to get your green card ultimately at the U.S. consulate in Montreal rather than adjusting your status in the U.S. That may make it easier for you to go in and out of the U.S. on your TN. Okay, so um, I think that's really important information for people to know that there is actually options in terms of getting the green card. You could go the adjustment of status route or you could go the consular route, right. depending on the circumstances. Exactly. So the follow-up question from Yihan is if, the, if, the, if um, the nurse gets an EB3 green card, how long will it take um, to get that actual green card if you were well, born in China? Yeah. Yeah, okay. So, it, yeah, it does depend on country of birth. 
So uh, what we put on, on, we put this on our webpage on a monthly basis. It's called the State Department Visa Bulletin. Um, and it shows when people who've applied in the past got green cards. So it might say, you know, uh, like in the Philippines right now, the EB3 category is backed up to October 15, 2017. So it looks like, okay, now it's October 2019. So it'll be two years to get a green card. Well, you can't tell. I mean, all it says is that people who have whose employers applied for them in 2017 can apply for their green cards now, but it doesn't necessarily mean that people who apply in 2019 will get their green cards two years later. So we have another page where uh, Charlie Oppenheim, who's the fellow from the State Department who puts out the visa bulletin every month, we put his predictions. And every month after the visa bulletin comes out, Charlie predicts how fast the numbers are going to move. But, but even Charlie, you know, I mean, you don't know what's going to happen in the future, so it's not 100% accurate. Um, so to, to get back to her general question, uh, you have to look at this month's visa bulletin for EB3 China. I, I don't have it in front of me right now, but it's probably, you know, backed up a few years right now. And India is probably backed up more than 10 years. But again, this is looking backward. If you, if you look at how many people are in line on EB2 and EB3 from India, it's over 500,000. And there's only about 50,000 visas that can be given out in those two categories to Indians each year. Um, going forward, it could be over 50 years for somebody from India. So there is a bill called uh, S386 that's in front of the Senate to get rid of those per country caps. But that's another that's discussion because if they suddenly just get rid of it, then people from all the different countries, including China and India are gonna be backed up over 10 years. So we're hoping that Congress will eventually come up with a solution that will one, take off the per country caps and two, increase the amount of numbers, especially for shortage occupations like registered nurses. The country really needs registered nurses. Uh, we have a lot of aging, aging baby boomers, and you're looking at one of them right now. <laughs> and we and need you're looking at another. <laughs> <laughs> we need medical care, and we're not turning out enough nurses in the U.S. And until we do, we need as many foreign nurses as possible coming to the U.S. Yes. I agree as one of the baby boomers as well. I couldn't agree with you more. What, what do they call it, Carl? The silver tsunami, right? Oh, that's, okay. what the baby, that's, that's what the baby boomers are. Gonna need a lot of care in okay. the coming years. And um, okay, that was very informative. Thank you. And Maria, we, we, you're back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure what's happening. I apologize for uh, that. I think my uh, internet oh, connection well, is Well, you're back. So we're happy to have you back. <laughs> okay, we're gonna move on to the next question. Um, which comes from Vivian. Vivian asks, does the US employers need recent hospital experience in order for the applicant to be selected or shortlisted? Not really an immigration question, but Maria, over to you on that one. Yeah, I think Tanya, you're probably better suited to answer that than Carl or I are. Um, that's probably just an employer preference as far as whether they would like you to have recent experience or not. I think most do, but it's not required for the immigration process. Okay. So I, yes, I can answer that question. So Vivian, we have facilities all over the, the US. Um, some of them are very strict in terms of the requirements that they have for their nurses, years of experience, education, etc. And some of them are not. So you tend to find that the hospitals, acute care hospitals are gonna have um, more firm requirements in terms of experience, but we do have a lot of nursing homes all over the US so please reach out to us and we'd be happy to help you. We've actually helped a lot of internationally educated nurses that came to, the, to Canada and are now working as LPNs or health aides and we've helped a lot of those nurses. So don't feel despondent if you are an RN in your home country and currently not working as an RN, we can help you. So please reach out to us and let, and let us know um, who you are and we can do our best to assist. 
So we have a, um, another question from Guado. Um, Guado is asking, if I apply for the TN visa, then go for the EB3, eventually on, on what country visa bulletin mm -hmm. will I be categorized? Is it under Philippines or Canada? So this is a question that we get office, often, Guado. Carl, do you want to, oh, uh, Maria, sorry, do you want to take that one? <laughs> sure, yeah, so um, the TN goes by your country of citizenship, which presumably if you're, um, you're on a TN, you have Canadian citizenship, but the visa bulletin um, that I, I missed part of the discussion earlier, but that Carl was talking about goes by your country of birth. So unfortunately, even if you um, obtain Canadian citizenship, you were obviously still born in the Philippines. So your EB3 would go by the Philippines. Okay. And the Philippines, unfortunately, is still backed up. And it, it's been really volatile, right, Maria and Carl? Mm -hmm. I mean, the visa bulletin is... I want to talk a little bit about the visa bulletin and the volatility that we've seen over the last year, 18 months. Yeah, I mean, it's sort of like the stock market, you know, and my, my, my <laughs> stock one yesterday, and it's back up today, you know, so, mm -hmm. you know, you, you have to look at the you dizzy. picture, not, not any <laughs> one month. I mean, I wouldn't say Philippines uh, is really bad now. It's a two-year wait, but, you you know, you, you have to do certain things anyway. You have to get the visa screen, pass the NCLEX, get your I-140 approved, and those things take time, so it's not like after you do all of those, you still have to wait another two years. And I, I wanted to say one, one other thing about the visa bulletin. It only applies to maybe a handful of people, but it's called cross-chargeability. So even though it's not always your country of birth, if you're Filipino and maybe your wife was born in Canada, then you can use Canada and skip that two-year wait. So just... Just something to think about. Yeah, so that's really important. Um, we have a, a, a nurse, um, one of the nurses that we've been working with, she had a previous priority date. So she, she was born in the Philippines, but she had a previous priority date from 2007 wow. um, and just now arrived in the US well, recently. Um, and then married somebody from Portugal. And we were like, oh my goodness, if you'd only yeah. married that person before, <laughs> you could have saved yourself yeah. many, many years. <laughs> um, okay, moving on to the next question. We have a question from Priyanka. Um, I'm an Indian nurse who's now a Canadian citizen and I have a license in Texas. So she's, um, Priyanka's passed her, her NCLEX. She has a visa screen and a job offer in Texas. So the question is, can my husband, who is Indian born, but is not a Canadian citizen, come with me to the U.S.? Carl. Yes. Oh, oh sorry. Maria, go, ahead. sorry. <laughs> yeah, go ahead, Maria. Go ahead, Maria. Yes, yes. He would be eligible for a TD, even if he's not Canadian born, as okay. a dependent. Okay. So would he go through the process in the same way as any Canadian citizen would, or are there any differences that he, he would need to go through from a process perspective? So the main difference is that he would need to apply for a visa stamp, whereas Canadian citizens do not have to apply for a visa stamp. They can just cross straight into the U.S. at the border. Um, but he would actually have to visit the embassy and apply for a visa stamp in his passport. So he would have to do that before he crosses the border? Correct. Yes. Okay. okay. Um, we have a question from Tina who's asked, um, I'm working currently in Texas in long-term care, and I want to get a second job. I'm not sure if I'm going to get a part-time or a second full-time job. Can I apply for a second TN? And can I, and, and I think the question is, can I apply for a part-time or um, a, a, another full-time TN? So the answer to both of those is yes. Um, okay. you, you have to have both employers, you know, file you know, for TNs for you, but you can have uh, two TNs, even even three at the same time, really. Um, but uh, if it's full time, expect to get more questions from the immigration service. Yes, because, exactly. uh, you know, how many people want to work 80 hours a week? But but legally, it is possible. And we do have people, we do have nurses doing that. Okay. So would Tina have to go through the same process, getting the, the TN letter, going to the border, having a list of documents, or would there be, in, there be any difference in getting the second? Well, I would have both sets of documents at the border so that the officer 
admits her as a TM, but knows that she's working for two different employers. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so that's good advice. Um, we have a question from Olu, um, who is working in North Carolina, and she is coming to the end of her TN, her first TN, um, which was stamped for, for two years, um, and she wants to know how to go about doing the renewal, Maria. So there's for two options for that. Um, the first would be you go to the border and re-enter, leave the US, re-enter with a fresh set of documents and get a new term of your TN, the process that, that Carl was just referencing. The second option would be to make a filing here from inside the US uh, with the USCIS and submit that where your employer would submit it on your behalf, asking for an extension of your, of your TN. Um, generally speaking, I would say that the border option is a little bit easier, mostly just because it's quicker and you're obviously already familiar with that process. Um, but certainly either option accomplishes the TN extension and would allow you to continue working in the US. Okay. Is there any advice in terms of the timing? Like when should somebody do that when you're going to be renewing? Should you do it before your first TN has expired or do you do it like as it expires? Or like what, what's the best advice from a timing perspective? Yeah, you can file anytime um, before it expires. Generally, I'd say do it at least a couple of, of weeks or months ahead um, just to give yourself time to make sure you secure the extension before the current TN expires, if that's possible. Um, what we find is that most of the time, um, you know, you're probably already planning a trip home, maybe for a wedding or a, you know, for the holidays or something, and you can maybe uh, sync up your extension at the border with that trip, and then just make sure when you return, you have the updated documents. So, um, if you know that you're planning to go home for some family event or, or other occasion, just communicate that to your employer so they can make sure you have the up-to-date documents when you travel. Okay, so again, you would be going through the exact same process, but the key is to be organized and make sure that you don't miss that deadline and you don't go out of status or something like that. Yes. Um, okay, we have um, a question um, from um, Michael, who is asking, um, he knows that the TN is for three years, but he got the TN, when he went through the border, he got the TN for two years. Is there a problem with that? Is that something to worry about? Oh, I mean, he, he doesn't have to worry about it, but usually we, we encourage the employers in their letter to ask for the full three years. It just, it, you know, somebody, if they're not planning to go to the border and so on, it just creates an extra trip for them. So it's not a problem. It means you'll have to go before the two years are over and then hopefully to get three years this time. Okay. Would there have been a reason why he would have got two years rather than three? Is there like some reason that, I mean, I know it's probably hard to say because we don't know what was in the mind of the, of the, um, <laughs> the, the border officer, but it, is there any, I, any idea of why that might happen? Well, I mean, I mean there's a multiple reasons I've, I've seen that happen. And, uh, did the employer even ask for three years? If the employer only asked for two years, then they can't give them the, the full three years. But there's a lot, there's a lot of scenarios where uh, they give them. Yeah, maybe his passport's running out, something like that. That could be a reason as well. Okay, okay. So, Michael, just keep track of your time and make sure that you, you know when to renew and no need to worry. Scratch that off your worry list, right? <laughs> <laughs> Maria and Carl said it's okay. <laughs> okay, we ha I have a question that was sent to me in the Zoom chat. I'm a Canadian citizen and Illinois NCLEX passer, no visa screen yet. Which is the better path to, to US, TN visa, then apply for green card or straight to EB3? So Maria, that's similar to the question we got earlier in the session, but maybe if you want to just... Um, uh, give a shot at that, that, that question. Sure. Yeah. Um, you know, I think again, like I said before, it sort of depends what your plans are, what you're looking for. Uh, one advantage in this specific question that might be of coming on a TN and then switching to an EB3 would just be, it gives you an opportunity to come to the U S work with that employer make sure that's a place that you want to stay long term. And then uh, what I found is that a lot of the employers are a little bit more, um, 
incentivized or excited to work on your green card once they've met you and they see what a great job you're doing at the hospital or the nursing home, then they're going to be that much more willing to sponsor you for the EB3 because they know that you're doing a great job and they want to keep with the U.S. So it might make the pathway to an EB3 a little bit easier in the sense that the employer has already met you and knows you're doing a great job. Okay. Would there be any difference from a timing perspective? Uh, not, not really. The main difference would be that um, for a TN, again, because it has that intent to return home to Canada, depending on how the filings are made and what attorney you consult with, some attorneys prefer that you return to Canada and process the green card through the embassy versus processing the green card from inside the U.S. Uh, because the TN requires that you be planning to return home, but the green card is obviously evidence that you're not planning to return home, that you're planning to stay in the U.S. more long term. So that could um, require you to leave and, and come back, but it wouldn't necessarily change the process timing. Um, you'd still fall in the, the visa bulletin under the EB3 category and, and move through the process generally the same way. Okay. All right. Thank you for that. So we have a question from Tracy who asked, I'm from the Philippines and would like and would want to work in, as an RN in the US. How can I get an employer and what process do I have to go through? So I can probably help you with that one, Tracy. Mm -hmm. um, you can apply. Um, we are what we call career matchmakers. So we have opportunities all over the US. And one of our team would work with you, ask a lot of questions and see what's going to be the best fit. And then would um, once we know where, where you're going to be working, you would then uh, start working with one of the immigration lawyers. So it could be Schusterman's team. It could be Marcella's team to help mm -hmm. to get you to the US. <laughs> Um, okay, oh my goodness, we are almost out of time. <laughs> I'm going to take one or two more questions um, from the ones that were sent to me initially. Um, oh, so here's a question um, that comes from Manny. Um, do I need a lawyer for the TN? <laughs> um, okay, so <laughs> it's like anything else. <laughs> Let, let me make my son's a doctor and <laughs> and and his and he's half Filipino because my yeah. wife is Filipino. So if if I was having you know you're you're a nurse, Manny. Think about it this way: if I was having chest pains, uh, could I just take care of it by myself, or should I see a doctor? Right? <laughs> uh, I think you would say go see a doctor because you know maybe I'm having a heart attack or something or. Or maybe I just uh, ate something wrong for lunch or something. Um, Could be more we, serious or not. <laughs> yeah. So it, is it possible to, to do a TN or even a green card without a lawyer? Yes, it is. Um, we, we had a case recently where we had this brilliant doctor out in West Virginia. And doctors come on a, something called a J visa. And it makes you go home for two years. So he got the J visa, then he got a waiver of that requirement, then he got his H-1B temporary visa, then he applied for a green card due to reasons, I, I have it on my webpage under our success stories, but due to reasons which we don't have enough time to go through, he ended up uh, applying for citizenship, getting it denied, and then getting put, after he had already married a US citizen and had a citizen child, put into deportation proceedings uh -huh. to send oh him gosh. back. Wow. And then at that point, he decided, uh, you know, I'm brilliant. And he is, he is, you know, but he's not a lawyer, but he's, he's a brilliant <laughs> guy. Um, maybe I need a lawyer at this point. So he calls us all the way from Virginia. And we made a deal with the uh, district council, uh, which is the head lawyer of immigration in Arlington, Virginia and got him out of the deportation proceeding, and now we're getting him citizenship. But he would be the first guy to tell you, get a lawyer to do this. It's definitely worth whatever money that you spend not to have some big foul up. But, but Manny, I leave it up to you. If you think you can do it without <laughs> a lawyer, go ahead. But uh, sometimes, especially, you know, especially with this administration right now, we're see, even lawyers are seeing a lot of things we've never seen before. So uh, I would be on the cautious side. I would have a lawyer do it if it were me. Okay. 
Good advice, Carl. <laughs> okay, we have time for one more question. Um, and I'm going to take this question um, from Sorel. So Sorel is asking about the visa screen and, and the IELTS. Um, Maria, do you want to maybe talk a little bit about the visa screen and the IELTS? Sure. So the, I'm, I'm sorry. I said that the visa screen and IELTS requirement for the TN. Oh, sure, sure. So the visa screen um, essentially has kind of three components, which includes the English language proficiency. It also includes sort of a background check to make sure that um, your license is free of any kind of disciplinary action or anything like that. And then it also includes an education evaluation to ensure that your education abroad is equivalent to a U.S. Um, level of education here in, in the U.S. as far as the nursing profession is concerned. Um, sometimes you can get the IELTS requirement waived if your education was primarily done in English. So that kind of speeds up the process a little bit and then takes away some of the paperwork and the, the headache of the process of getting a visa screen. Um, but you are required to have a visa screen when you enter the U.S. and most nurses are probably all get that through CGFNS. Um, which is the, the main organization that issues the visa screen to nurses. Okay, thank you for that clarification. I know it's, it's such a confusing process with all the immigration requirements and the licensing requirements. So thank you for that clarification. Um, and just to, to end off as well, um, for anyone who has not yet passed the IELTS, and the interesting thing is I always have noticed, and Carla Marie, I don't know if you noticed this as well, but nurses seem to be more nervous these days about taking the IELTS exam, then taking the NCLEX. Um, <laughs> we have some nurses taking the IELTS time and time and time again um, and, and really getting very stressed out about it. So just to mention to everybody that Kinetics do have a free IELTS support group. Um, it is totally free. It's a closed group. You're welcome to join it. We have uh, partnered with a company called Swish English, which are a UK company. And uh, the reason why we chose this UK company is because the criteria in the UK is a much higher one than what we have here in the US. So we, we knew that if Swish could get nurses through the IELTS, um, uh, you know, in, in the UK, that they could certainly do that here in the US. Um, and also a lot of the, the IELTS, uh, or a lot of the Swish um, uh, teachers are ex-IELTS examiners. So that was another advantage. So it's really, it's free materials. We can put you together with a, a study partner to help you get through that. But as Maria just said, you have to have the IELTS if you were, were not trained in English and you have to have a visa screen to come on the TN or to get the green card. So there really is no choice on that. And it's just something that you're gonna have to get done. Um, we are out of time. How did that happen? Every, I talk too much. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's all interesting stuff, Carl, both of you, yeah. both Carl and Maria. So I just wanted to thank you both for, for joining me. And um, thank you for everybody who has, um, has joined and is watching us. Thanks again to David from um, David Salcido who, for giving us the opportunity. Um, and um, we will be doing these Facebook live sessions once a month. So keep the questions coming and we wish everybody a great weekend and we look forward to seeing all of you in the US. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much, everybody. Bye-bye. <laughs>